Hey everybody, welcome. Hope you all are doing well. Here is the lesson that we did today in class. It was about chapter four, lesson five. This lesson is about different ways that you can represent functions, comparing properties of functions. This is stuff we've been doing all chapter along, so this shouldn't be anything new. What we're gonna to start to see now is they're gonna give you two different scenarios, and they're really just gonna to try to fool your eyes, right? Everyone's eyes are gonna be drawn to the graphs and the charts, but what you're really gonna to have to make sure you watch today is there's a second scenario in almost every single one of these questions, and a lot of times up here in the paragraph, it gives you information about scenario number one, and then this down here, where your eyes are drawn, is situation number two. And so they're gonna ask you to compare both situations, and if you don't pay attention to the words, you're not even gonna realize that there's a situation up here. Right? And so they're gonna hide one of the situations, one of the scenarios up here, and then they're gonna give you a nice big chart or graph for the other one. Let me show you some these three examples, and hopefully that'll make sense. So we're comparing properties of functions. Here's number one. Cassie is downloading music and games onto her phone. It costs 99 cents to download a song to her phone. The cost of downloading games are shown in the graph. See right there, we've already got two situations. Compare the functions for each kind of download by comparing the costs. And so they did it right on this very first one. Look, it costs 99 cents for her to download a song to her phone. All right, so this is the songs. They've hidden this information for the songs up here in this paragraph. The cost for downloading games are shown in the graph. So the games are down here, right? And so you have situation number one right here in the sentence, and then situation number two is down here in the graph. Now, you don't, have to, you don't actually have to label it with the arrows like I am. I'm just trying to show you where it is. So what do we have to do? Compare the functions for each kind of download by comparing the costs. Okay, let's go up here. Situation number one was the one that was a little bit harder to find. It was hiding up here. 99 cents to download a song to her phone. So I'm just going to say... Um, songs cost 99 cents each. 99 cents for each download, right? Pretty straightforward, 99 cents for each song. And then what about the games? The games is going to be a little bit trickier. It's not quite as uh, easy to see. Look what you have. One game costs $1.59. Two games costs a three dollars and eighteen cents so one game is a dollar fifty nine two games is three dollars and eighteen cents how much money is that for each game like we've added one game how much money has has increased the price or how much money has the price increased by sorry about that let's subtract it and find out if I subtract this I don't have a calculator with me so I'm just gonna have to go old school here obviously you guys use a calculator on your own at your house or on your phone if you have a calculator on your phone. Look, this is going up by $1.59. $1.59 plus $1.59. Then if we did another one, three would be another $1.59. Um, so every single time it goes up by $1.59. And that's going to give me an indication that for my games, I should say games costs $1.59 for each download. And remember, how did I do that? I just tried to find the pattern from one to two. Okay, so that's they're adding one game. How much money did they add right here? I just had to subtract it. Okay, there's number one. This is actually my answer. I just had to describe each one. Perfect. Number two, the number of gallons, y, that a pool drains in x minutes is represented by the function y equals 20x. Okay, so this is situation number one. This is it right here. This is your pool draining. Draining is situation number one. The table down here, the table shows the time it takes to fill up. So this is filling it up. Filling it up right here. This is situation number two. So situation number one is the equation. Situation number two is the table. Compare the functions for each process by comparing the times. Okay, pretty straightforward. The pool drains with this function, y equals 20x. Do you know what that means? y equals 20x. This is our slope. Our slope is 20. Um, that means this 
drains at a rate of 20, what is it, 20, look right here, 20 gallons per minute. And also they have right here, gallons and minutes. 20 gallons per minute. So every minute it can drain 20 gallons out of the pool. Okay, that was for just from the equation. Now number two, situation number two, the table is filling it up. So we can say the pool fills up at a rate, and now we're gonna have to figure out the rate on this one, it's in the chart. So the minutes are increasing by one, plus one, plus one. The gallons are increasing by, what is that? From 15 to 30, mm, is that adding 15? From 30 to 45, is that also adding 15? So 15 gallons every minute, right? 15 gallons every one minute, 15 gallons every one minute. So. That's going to be what I used down here. That is the slope. That is the rate of change. Later on, uh, the questions I put on the McGraw-Hill site, they might ask you to compare the rates of change, compare the slopes. There it is. 20 gallons per minute and 15 gallons per minute. So we can drain the pool a lot faster than we can fill it up. Okay, one more. This one is got two charts. One is a table, one is a graph. So there is nothing, I don't think, hiding in a paragraph here. The speeds of a coyote and giraffe are shown in the graph and table below. Compare the functions by comparing the rates of change. Okay. The rates of change, that's the slope. So here's the coyote, situation number one. The coyote goes, let's see, at zero hours, he's gone zero miles. How far he's ran, that makes sense. One hour, he's ran 43 miles. So from here to here, right, we've added one hour we've added 43 miles. All right, this is plus one from zero to one. This is from zero to 43, this is plus 43. So that's pretty straightforward, right? The coyote can run 43 miles an hour. That is the rate of change. That's his speed. Can a coyote really go, go 43 miles an hour? That seems fast to me, but I don't know. Maybe it's like on the cartoons, Wiley Coyote. Now here is your table, the land speed of a giraffe. Okay, now a giraffe, uh, oh wow, this is going by 0 0.5, 0 0.5. We're adding 0 0.5. And here we're adding, what, 16 to 32, 32 to 48. Um, if you're not the best at adding that in your head, just subtract them. Um, 48 minus 32, you could also do that if that was easier for you. You can see it's adding the same thing every time, it's adding 16. We're adding 16 miles in every half hour. 16 miles in every half hour. 16 divided by 0.5. You could use a calculator. Um, I don't have a calculator, so I'm gonna go old school. Move that once, move that once. Um, that should be 10.32. So the Giraffe is going 32 miles an hour, right? 16 divided by 0 0.5. 16 divided by 0 0.5. And so the um, giraffe runs. That seems really fast for a giraffe as well. MPH. Those are the rates of change, right? When we compared how much this changed to how much this changed. How much this quantity, the dependent variable changed, to how much this quantity changed, the independent variable. Oh, question B. How much farther does a coyote run than a giraffe after three hours? Three hours. Okay, so I only have up to one hour, but we know it's going up by 43 every time, right? One hour is 43. Two hours is gonna be another 43. Three hours would be another 43. Or another way I could have done this is what? 43 times three, right? I could have added it and got 129, or here you add it up. So, um, this one can go 129 miles in three hours. Uh, I'm just going to put a box around it. It's not my answer. I just need that. Over here, um, it goes 32 miles an hour, right? So we could do 32 plus 32 plus 32 and get 96. Or you could do 32 times 3 and get 96 miles in three hours. Luckily, I have my, well, this isn't my answer, but th these are the two numbers I need, right? Whoops, can't even see that. 
How much farther does a coyote go? 129 compared to 96. How many more miles is that? Here's my final answer. 129 minus 96. Three, three, 33 miles. 33 miles. 33 miles farther. Okay, so that's gonna be your big idea today, guys. You're gonna have situations where they hide information in an equation or and then they put it in a graph. Or they have an equation and then they do a table. Or maybe they do one graph and one table and you're just gonna to have to compare them. I think these are the questions you all are gonna to have to look at. I'm gonna have them on the computer, but I think they look like this, right? I'm just gonna be a quick preview and then I'll, I'll stop. Apollo's portraits. Um, Okay, that one's gonna be pretty easy. It's gonna just like the ones that we did. Number two is actually a little bit tougher. It says, here is Josh's salary. His equation is a little bit different. And then Martin's is right down here. This is Martin. And this is Josh right there. It says, compare the y-intercepts, the y-intercepts and the rate of change, right? This is the y-intercept right here. Josh's y-intercept is 75. So he already has $75 before he starts. And then his rate of change is right here. He makes $40 per painting, but then he already has $75 um, for his commission, I guess. And then this person, you can see it's counting up by 35. So this Martin makes $35 for each painting, but the rate of change, I'm sorry, the, the y-intercept you can't really see the y-intercept is always going to be with zero, and you don't have zero, so just count backwards. What's 115 minus 35? Uh-oh. There's the bell, guys. I'm going to have to go. 80. So his is 80. Um, his y-intercept is 80. And then his rate is 35. Okay, number three is going to ask you which one is a direct variation. Direct variation is always going to start at the origin. It's always going to have zero, zero as a point. And so I can tell this one is not. This one, if I count backwards, 30, 20, 10, 0, I would go 9, 6, 3, 0. See how I'd have 0 and 0 if I continued the pattern backwards? This one does not. If I went back to 0, it's still going to be at 2. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. The bell just rang, guys. I will catch you in another video. And uh, be sure to check the questions on McGraw-Hill, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.